Basically, when you're, when you're starting to set a saltwater tank system up, there's a few things you might want to keep in mind. Like anything, especially fish tanks, you know, if you're not going to keep up with it and, and practice good maintenance, you know, you're really not going to have good, you know, results. So, especially, in, especially when you're starting up good maintenance practices, keep the thing clean, change the water out, change out the filter pads. It's going to help out. Saltwater does get a little bit more involved. You might need a couple more tools for it. You might need a little bit uh, more equipment. So you want to get some things like me. You might have to buy some, uh, like a test kit or something. So try to start, well, some of the tools you might think you might need. So it might be a little bit easier. And then get a good setup. Um, you know, saltwater gets a little bit more involved. You, you really, a lot of times, you know, you're going to start filling the water a little bit more. So try to get a really good setup in the, you know, in the beginning. So it make it a little bit easier on yourself. And then you use your resources. Bucks County is a huge resource. You guys are a part of a huge resource. Um, you know, you guys, go, we have information here. We have people here. We have used products here. So use it for what it's worth. You know, I, this is what happens, the right-hand slide. This is all salt water, that whole system. It's plumbed up to this tank up top. It's kind of it's a little dirty, but that's what happens when you start using everything that comes through and you start buying up equipment. You, your system goes into 300 gallons, and, you know, 60 70% of the stuff you're looking at is bought right here at, at Box. So... I really, when I came here, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I started building all kinds of filters and just went crazy with it. And it was, it's been a blast ever since. There are three types of fish only. A fowler, a fish only with live rock, and a reef tank. So fish only, it's, it's least demanding. It's cost effective. It has a minimal setup. A versatility of species. And usually a lot of times it has a lot of artificial decor in it. It's basically a saltwater fish tank. A lot of the, um, a lot of the, the, the shows now on, on Nat Geo and stuff are showing this stuff. They have all these tanks, and it's basically a fish, saltwater fish only tank. Uh, fake decor, bunch of fish in there. And the tanks, I, I personally, I like them. So. And now you got your Fowler tank. It's a fish only with live rock. Took me about a year and a half, two years to figure out the Fowler thing. That's a new term that's been, that came up the last, I've seen in the last couple of years, but um, it's fish only with live rock. You can use, in, in like um, a fish only tank, you can use any tank you want. With the Fowler, it's any tank, shape or size, but remember, now you're going to use live rock. You're going to be putting rock in there, big rocks in there. You might want something a little bit more square to make a nice formation. Depends on what you want. Uh, one of the benefits is uh, it's more natural looking than a fish only tank. You know, it actually has live rock and all kinds of stuff might be trying to grow on the um, tank or on the live rock. It has a versatility of species. Now, some fish need live rock to, you know, to, to get to eat and stuff some of the foods that are coming off there. Puffers and wrasses. Puffers need to chomp on it and, and grind up some of uh, the, the live rock. They, they chew on it. Rasses, parrotfish do the same thing. Rasses need some of the live foods coming off the live rock. So you might, this might be a convincing thing that what kind of fish you might want to keep, you might want some live rock to keep with it. Again, it's, it's a less, a less equipment than a reef, and it's space efficient. Again, you don't need this big, huge, elaborate system to run something like this. And then here's a, a Fowler tank, and then you got your bicolor angel, you got your damsels up there with the live rock. Yeah, very simple thing, but I mean, you know, you, the colors of the fish are just beautiful. And then reef tank is a baller status. I mean, <laughs> nothing beats a reef tank. If you see a true reef tank and a, a real mature reef tank, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's one of the most complex aquarium keeping out there. You're going to get really technical within the water, chemistry and all that stuff. You got to figure out what's going on. Uh, square, shallow tanks are best. You want, 
you want more surface area for, for stacking rock again, and also water movement. Water movement is huge in a reef tank. You don't want, you want water currents whipping around and stuff because you want um, water to, to move some of the uh, minerals and stuff around and what trace elements and, and, and pick up a lot of the, the uh, waste in a tank. It's a true community tank. Now, we, you know, uh, we have, in the saltwater world, we have fish, we have live rock, we have coral, we have shrimps, we have cucumbers, we have, you know, crabs. We have all kinds of really cool stuff. So anyway, this is the 20,000-gallon uh, uh, reef tank up in uh, Long Island Aquarium. And you can see, this is a huge example. You can see all the different corals and stuff in there, the, the, the big uh, Atlantic tang. You got the Emperor over there, a big, looks like a big brown tang or something back there. It's a true community tank, and uh, it, it really works as a whole system, and it's really neat to watch. You're going to need a water source, and there's three types of water. There's tap, distilled, and RO. Now tap, tap, Tap is a controversial issue because people, you know, technically you shouldn't be using it because it, there's a lot of contaminants that come through the water in tap, it come through your spigot in tap water. And if you're not removing that stuff, it ends up becoming food for like algae and stuff. But people use it. And if you're going to use it, you should run, you should run it through some kind of filter first, like a sediment filter or carbon filter. At least try to pull some of that stuff out. Some of these places um, sell a tap water filter. Um, you can get them. I use, I use a different source. So this is Jason Heffern's tank, and he's going to prove me wrong. You're not paying attention. This is, it's, I got this at the Blue Knight. Jason had to move this tank in a... Uh, in the middle of uh, one late night on a Sunday or Monday night out of a place and we had to go do this and we only had a few hours to do this so I only got to snap this one picture this is a tank that's been running off of tap water for at least almost a year he was purifying it through some uh, a tap water filter when, which I was just trying to get at distilled is a purified it's a, it's a pure water it's steam dist uh, distilled they evaporate it and then they collect it it could be bought at supermarkets, but it's not, you know, you don't want to go buy a, a bunch of gallons of one gallons of distilled water when you can get other sources of water. RO, reverse osmosis, it can be bought at supermarkets and aquarium stores. They, it varies from 50 cents to a dollar. You can buy home, home systems at home improvement stores like Home Depot and... Lowe's. It comes with a sediment filter, a carbon filter, and it usually, and it has a semi-permeable membrane. Basically what it does, it, it, under pressure, it squeezes out some of the, the sediments that are coming through, uh, all the total dissolved solids, the TDS, into a wastewater, and you get a pure, you, you get a, a clean water line. So it separates it. And um, you can get them. You can buy a you can buy a system for your fish room, and you know you, you can just hook it right up to a pipe. Uh, um, it has a TDS meter. It'll tell you how how clean the water is coming out of there. I, I set up a reservoir. That's the reservoir. That top tube is a um, float switch in there. It'll it'll turn the machine on for me on and off. It'll, it'll, it'll turn it off when it, when I'm when it's done making water. Okay. So now, next slide. The next, I get, I, since you get a waistline, so when I'm making, it takes, I forget how many gallons of tap water it takes to make a one gallon of RO. It, it's a lot, so there's a lot of waste that comes out of there. So basically, what I do is, I run my waistline through a, a cichlid system I put together. I have some angels in there, nothing, nothing too crazy. And basically, when I use the machine, it drips, it drips into my sump there, and all these tanks are connected. And then there's an overflow on my sump, and it goes to that, this white, the white uh, PVC pipe there, and that's connected to the sump in my house. So it, it, the water runs through there. There's no nitrates coming through the water. That's basically automatic water changes. 
So it, it's nice. The fish can handle the hardness. We have a lot of hard water in our in our area, so a lot of minerals are coming through. Or you want to, you're gonna have to again. You're gonna have to make your salt water. So you, there's all kinds of different brands of salt, and there's the more expensive contain more trace elements and stuff like that, and it can go up to laboratory grades and stuff. But basically, I use a real low grade salt on my systems. I use Instant Ocean. It's thirty-five dollars, and if I need to add some some stuff, I'll, I'll do it. Um, it's lower lower on calcium and stuff like that, but. If you're starting out with just fish in your tank, that's fine. You don't want all that stuff in there because what's going to be using and, and, and consuming all that stuff. So, if you, you know, this is uh, Instant Ocean is a great product to start out with. Uh, like I said, it's $35. The, the Tropic Marin, that stuff's almost up to $100. Like nine, I saw it online for like $90 a bucket the other day, which is incredible. You got Red Sea, Resalt. It's, it's basically all the same. You're going to need to um, measure how much salt's in the water. Um, so you're going, to, you're going to need an instrument of choice, a refractometer, a glass hydrometer, or a digital hydrometer. Uh, refractometer is right up here. Um, this is what I use. You basically just put a drop of water under a lens, and you hold it up to the light. You dial it in, and it tells you how much salt's in there. You're going to need, you're going to need a mixed container. You're already going to have your salt in your water. You're going to need something to mix it, so you're going to need a pump or a power head to move it all around. And I suggest an air pump, an air stone, to uh, help mix everything up. Uh, you get a better mix and stuff, and everything's dissolved a lot better when you put an air stone in there. It keeps the water fresh. Um, and, and anywhere from 1.020 to 1.026 is specific gravity. How much, how much salt's in the water is what you want. Uh, when you start out, you know, it's anywhere from 2.0 to 2.3, but when you get into corals, they say it, keep it a little higher to 2.5, 2.6. You saw my RO machine, my reservoir was up top. Now, here's my mix barrel from my old, my old uh, fish room. And uh, basically, I would fill up the salt here. I would mix the salt in the barrel, and then I would, I would there's a pump down there, and I would just send a line over. And this is all feeding to the sump. And then when I wanted to change out water, here's the, the drain for, for the sump. And it would go right into the house sump. So I just open it up and just send, send salt water right over. It was a great system to like clog the pump. You got mechanical, chemical, and biological. Mechanical is basically, you know, physically removing waste. You have hang on the back filters, canister filters, anywhere the the, the stuff is collecting, you know, basically, you know, your, your, your freshwater stuff with filter pads and stuff, just the same stuff that you're using at home. You know, the waste is collecting on there, you're picking it up, you're throwing it out. Uh, one of the big ones that we have is um, in the saltwater world is protein skimmers. And when you start doing mechanical filterization, it works immediately. Protein skimming, it's the biggest form of saltwater mechanical filterization. It removes proteins that are attached to air bubbles. Air bu so air bubbles are forced into a cylinder and foam is collected into a cup and removed. Basically, you're, you're, sending, all these, you're sending all these air bubbles into this cylinder to be collected up into this cup. And as, uh, as, as it's moving through the water, all these little air bubbles creating a lot of surface area and proteins are sticking to this. And it's, and it's creating this foam, and then you collect it, and you, and you throw it out. Now, natural forms of uh, protein skimming are waterfalls and waves crashing on the beach. We've all seen it. We've all stepped in it. It's a like green slime that, that's on the beach. It's, and it's, it's good for the beginning of salt, beginner saltwater keeper because when something dies in your tank and it starts breaking down, the skimmer is going to get it out, start working immediately on it, and, and uh, it's going to go crazy, especially real fleshy stuff like clams and, and stuff like that.